Welcome to the broadcast service for the United Parish of Kalinchi, Kilmood and Tulna Kill. It is our delight to have the Reverend Stephen McElhenney with us today. Stephen is the Director of South American Missions. Our opening hymn is Before the Throne of God Above, I Have a Strong and Perfect Plea. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is written on his hands, my name is hidden in his heart, I know No power can force me to depart No power can force me to depart When Satan tempts me to despair And tells me of the guilt within Upward I look and see him there Who made an end to all because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on Him and pardon me. To look on Him and pardon me. Behold Him there, the risen Lamb. My perfect sinless righteousness The great unchangeable I am The King of glory and of grace One with my Lord I cannot die My soul is purchased by His blood My life is safe with Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my God my Savior and my God. A little bit of introduction about, about me. My name's Stephen. I am married to Kathy, who's sitting up the front row here, and I'm the mission director for SAM, South American Mission Society. Uh, and it's lovely to have the opportunity to come and to uh, encourage each one of us in what God's mission is, how we can be part of it, encourage one another to keep the big picture always in sight and always maintaining our focus. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter uh, 10 a little bit later on in our service and asking ourselves different questions about, well, what does it mean to really be missional and to ask God bigger questions about our role because he's already gone before us in all manner of things. So let's be quiet as we come before God, as we ask him to be with us, to minister to us, as we come together as the church, the called out ones, this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the call to worship, coming together to acknowledge you, to give you praise, to give you worship, to tell you those things which the Bible tells us and which our hearts encourage us to do. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for life. We thank you for the opportunity to worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins, to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, and to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. 
We're all wearing these masks, and as I was preparing for the service, I couldn't help thinking that one of the many ways in which we need to ask confession on a daily basis, and sometimes lots of times during the day, is to say sorry for the words that we speak. And it's almost as if a mask encourages us to think about, well, how do we speak? How do we encourage each other? And what about those times when we say something which later we go, I shouldn't have said that. I regret having made that comment. I wish I could take it back. It's almost as if the mask reminds us to be careful with our speech. So for those things, we week by week, and we're encouraged daily to say sorry to God for the times when we've spoken to people out of line, said something which we know we shouldn't have said. So these things, amongst other things that we know we want to say sorry to God for this morning, we say our confessional prayer, and I will read it out. Let's take a moment to bring before God those things which we want to say sorry for this morning. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and in deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. When we say sorry to God, he promises to forgive us. Hear these words of forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our special prayer for this Sunday in which we ask God to help us to pay particular attention to his written word, the scriptures. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is psalm number 90. And the psalmist is reflecting on how things are passed on from one generation to another. We all have a role to play. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us, and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works, and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork. O prosper 
the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now, we talked in our collect about the importance of Scripture, and we're going to read some of the Bible now, and our reading for this morning is from Luke chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. It's entitled, Jesus Sends Out the Seventy-Two. After this, the Lord appointed seventy-two others and sent them out two by two, ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest upon them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it confronts us. It asks questions of us. And Lord, I pray that we would be people who hear your word and that we would be molded to what we hear this morning. Living lives changed for your glory. Amen.
Now, I'm sure if you, unless you've been in a complete bubble and you've switched off the news, you'll know, obviously, COVID's on the go, but there's an American general election. And uh, if I was to show a picture here of Donald Trump, I wonder what some of the phrases that jump to mind about Donald Trump. And I saw a great little picture of him the other, well, a few weeks ago, and it simply said, rules don't apply to me. Okay, and we know that, don't we? Someone said that there's one of the newspapers in the States have been keeping a record during his time in office of how many untruths he has said, or things that he said, which the evidence says likewise. And it's it's unbelievable. It's something like 20,000 Things have been said in some shape or another. But I want us to pick up on that thing. That doesn't apply to me. Because we're all a bit like that, aren't we? And it works itself out in many different places and different shapes and forms. We may be, we we know people during these COVID times who have, by their actions, are saying, oh, that doesn't apply to me. Whether they don't have the masks on, whether... We're not social distancing. We see it happening in front of us or down in the far corner of the street or in, in a shop. We know that, and we've made the assumption, that that person has said, oh, that doesn't apply to me. I can do whatever I want. And it happens in all manner of things, in different spheres of life. Maybe when, when tax returns are being completed, people sort of skip over a section and say, that doesn't apply to me or some other way in which we've excused ourselves from maybe what we should be part of, what we should be completing in a fair way. I love this reading because it immediately confronts the notion that mission and being part of God's kingdom work doesn't apply to us. Or the notion that we have and say, that's for other people, that's for a minister, that's for that person, they're good at that sort of thing. Or they speak well, but that doesn't apply to me. I'll just do what I keep on doing. But this reading encourages to think bigger than that, and that each one of us has a role to play. And the other lovely thing about this reading is we don't need to have a certain level of experience or expertise or training in order to do what this reading uh, suggests to us. Why I also like this reading is because as Sam's mission director, that over the years I have seen people respond to God's call on their life, and every single one of them will say, I don't feel particularly special. You know, I don't have a set of skills which... I think is really required for this role, but I do sense God's call to respond to him and to go and to help in the Psalms missional work, whether that's in the local church setting, encouraging people to pray, or as the fewer number who have over the years gone and taken the step of training and going to the South American mission continent. All of them have responded to the fact that God calls everyone, every part of the church that is Christ, which you and I are part of, to think missionally and to go, not to remain passive in our thinking, but to take a step. Well, where does it all start? Because we read at the very beginning, the Lord appointed 72 Now, why that's important is that so much of the Gospels are focused on the 12, but for this moment, God says, you see the bigger crowd? You have a part to play in this. It was never meant to be a little sort of sect of people who were gathered, and it was their job only to go and bring the good news of the kingdom of God. 72, going from 12 to 72, is really opening it up, isn't it? And not only does he commission a greater number of people, he also gives another important part. He says, go in twos, go in pairs, buddy up, 
Don't do this by yourself. Don't be a lone ranger. But be linked up with a prayer partner. Be linked up with someone who's on the same page as you, who wants to explore and develop and walk in faith. Go out. That's the first thing. That's why I'm encouraged that the church at large, all of us here, are encouraged to be these type of people. Next thing he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. That's building on what he's already telling the 72. He says, I'm commissioning you, but we need more. We need others. And the key is prayer. The key is to recognize that your heavenly father is the one who can do it. And it says, ask the Lord. And actually, this word ask in the Greek is a really strong word. It's a beg. Have you ever had to beg for something for, from somebody? Have you ever have you said, I have nothing here. I, there, has it been, there's been a time in your life when you've had to go to somebody, cap in hand and say, look, I really need you to pull this out of the bag for me. I don't think so many of us are in that place these days, generally. But this is the emphasis of this word. Really get serious about asking God, recognizing he has all the resources, and asking him, begging him, Lord, please do this. Please send out people to the whole world, which is beginning locally here, of which I'm part of my families and my local neighborhoods and Kilmood and whether it's up the road in Ballygown or Clinchy or further afield up to Belfast, wherever it is that you spend time with people, there's the harvest. What else are we asked to do? And this is the, the bit about being vulnerable. Okay, I am sending you out like sheep amongst wolves. Okay, this is this bit that says, I mightn't feel like it. I mightn't have the expertise. I don't feel particularly theological. I don't have the words to say when I'm out and about. And Jesus goes, that's okay. You will be vulnerable. You will feel a little bit ill at ease and awkward. Because lambs in this part of the world, if there's a, if there's a dog or a wolf out amongst sheep, that's bad news. We know exactly what's going to happen. But here's the thing. All of those sheep came back to Jesus and they told the story. None of them fell by the wayside. They were protected as they did what God had asked them to do. So it's okay to feel vulnerable. It's okay to feel awkward. It's okay, it's okay to feel ill at ease and, oh, I'm not sure about this. Just go and be with people with the idea that God's asked me to be here. And it's no accident that I'm with these people today. Well, what do we bring? Well, we bring words, first of all, aren't we? we? First of all, we bring our presence. And with our presence, whether you know it or not, we have a peace. We have a peace that comes from God, something that we can't write about, something that we can't scientifically mark out the boundaries of and say, oh, that's what God's peace is. This is how you measure it. This is how we can know about it. There's a peace of God which is not just the absence of war and conflict in our lives, but it's a presence which basically says, with God, everything's going to be okay. During COVID-19, with God, everything's going to be okay. Do we have that hope? Do we have that trust? Are we combating anxiety and worry and fear with the peace of God? And when we, we have to do start with ourselves, but when we are grappling with that, we are also bringing that to people around us. You are a bearer of God's peace. And there will be people who latch on to that and go, that's amazing. You've got something which I don't have. I'm intrigued. What is that? There's your people of peace. Talk to them. Say, well, do you know what? I was praying this morning for God's peace. And maybe that's what you sense off me. There's your opening. That's simply how we do it. And the other thing that we bring are, is, the, is the kingdom of God, to declare the kingdom of God has come among you. That means God's rule. What does a kingdom represent? It's the rules. We live in, in, in a certain kingdom which has rules, and the rules have said, 
when you're out and about with COVID, this is the way we expect you to act. There's an understanding of following rules within a nation. And we fill our taxes. We do all sorts of things. We, st- we drive in a, in a certain way on the road, mostly. And we, we obey that. But God's kingdom says that there's a rule which is coming, which is greater than all of these things. And we're the forerunners of it. So be peace bearers, be bringers of the kingdom. And finally, keep moving. Keep moving. The pairs had to go out from town to town to town. They had to keep moving. And for us, the encouragement is to keep moving amongst our friends, our associates, people who we may sail with, play golf with, who we work with. Those are the people who we're to bring peace to. And the lovely thing about all of this is that we prepare the ground. Because what does the first verse remind us of? Jesus was about to go into these places. So your presence, your peace, your, your witness to the kingdom of God is preparing people to meet Jesus. What a privilege. What a responsibility. And we, I think you'll agree that with this in mind, we shouldn't be passive. We shouldn't sit back and let it all happen and not really concern ourselves with these things. But we need to be encouraged to be missional because when we are doing these sorts of things, indeed, we are being missional as God's word instructs us to. So we start off thinking, oh, Mr. Trump, that doesn't apply to me. I hope after just looking at this Luke chapter 10, the beginning of it, do you want to read it when you get back home again, that we will be of the opinion now that actually maybe this does apply to me. Maybe this gives me something to think about. Maybe today and this week I'm going to pray. I'm going to act that each time I go out of the house each day, I'm acting as a sent one. And I'm going to bring peace, peace, and the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us. And as we have heard your voice into our own lives, as we've rejoiced in knowing you, that we have been given a job to do. And that we too are to be missional in our thinking and in our actions. Lord, would you by your Holy Spirit challenge us afresh And even this coming week, pop into our minds and our hearts those times and places where we can pray for people, where we can be open to speak when a conversation allows us, and that we can play our small part, preparing people to encounter you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we remain seated, I will follow obviously in your mind, or you can say it quietly if you would like to, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. As we continue in our prayers today, we bring before God the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God and Lord of all, and that as we exist in these strange, difficult, uncertain times, that we are reminded from your word that you are the author of time, that you are the author of everything that exists, and that we can depend on you. Help us to trust you. Help us to have faith in you. We pray particularly for those who are suffering from the symptoms of COVID-19. We pray for your healing. We pray for those who care for patients. We remember the NHS staff. We pray that you would give them a resilience at this time, mentally, physically, and spiritually. We pray for those community workers who go from house to house, helping people maintain a sense of well-being in the midst of their sickness. We pray particularly for the governments of the world, all those in authority who are having to make difficult and complex decisions at this time. Lord, guide them. And we pray for wisdom at each step of the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, and particularly as we think about our reading today. We thank you for those people that you've placed around us who can be encouragers to us. Father, we pray for those people close to us who, as it were, are our two-by-twos as we are sent out into the world, people who we can confide in, people who we can trust, we can pray with. And we pray that we would be renewed in our enthusiasm for the call of mission, that we would take seriously our part to play. Father, we pray for those people of peace, in the future, who we will meet. Lord, even now we know who those people are. 
because we've had conversations, because we know that they are interested, but we've never taken it to the next step. We pray for your enabling by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of quietness, we bring our own personal prayers and requests and concerns to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us, that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we Give thanks to God for how he's spoken to us through his word today. Uh, We know that we go as people of peace with the words of peace as we speak out God's blessing on each other as we leave this place. So would you like to stand? And let's pray these words uh, on each other. The peace of God which passes all understanding... Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and for those for whom we pray this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.